Today, I'm taking you through the full process and things I've learned from creating this character that I did partly on stream and partly in my own time to get myself out of a little, not art block, but more of an art slump and to get better at character design and coming up with ideas as well. For those that are new, I'm Ben and I like to draw, paint, sculpt, particularly in this stylized way. And we're gonna go from the initial three word prompt and the illegible little ideation sketches, discovering the big idea about this character from some absolute legends in chat, all the way to the slightly more refined character design. Along with this fully painted hero image, I guess you'd call it. We're gonna take a closer look at how I translate references onto the character design. There's a little bit of a mental shift that I've gotta make with that. How I got this more painterly blocky texture using the key principles of light and shadow and the steps that I took to overcome the frustrating, awkward, ugly stage. I was wasting hours and things just weren't looking right and I couldn't figure out why but it's freaking obvious looking back on it now. And this video is sponsored by yours truly, and I've hired one of my characters, Frank, to talk to you about my Gumroad tutorial, but that almost didn't happen. The people love me, baby, and some Ooh, things baby. are gonna have to change. So let's kick off this video with the first stream where we discover the three word prompt. Three, two, one, bada bing. Mystical forest mechanic. And it was at that exact moment, I was thinking, oh, frick. Now what? And whenever I'm stuck, when it comes to art, you know where I'm going. Pinterest, baby! I was looking through all the generic images of mechanics, forests, greenery. I couldn't quite figure out what mystical meant, so I decided to go down the voodoo route. Beneblan does not know what you want. And after all that reference gathering, it's time to put pen to paper. So there I was, with a metric oh, ton right. of reference. And I don't know about you, but if I'm just looking at a butt ton of reference and a blank white canvas, I can feel stuck real quick. One thing that helps me is to just get all the generic ideas out with no judgment. One thing I knew I didn't want was a stereotypical mechanic. And after floundering around for about an hour or so, this absolute nugget of gold came through chat. He's fixing the myceliums or the underground tree connections, fungal networks. Alaska, bloody fan. Fantastic idea. As you can see, I couldn't contain my excitement. Because maybe she's not fixing mechanical things. Maybe she's just known as the mechanic, but she does things like fixing the root-like structures of a fungus in a more mystical way, making her more of a mystical mechanic of the forest. I know what you're thinking, and you're, and you're right. Right, a bit on the nose, but just for this video, let's just go. Now that I'm fueled with this fantastic idea, and a whole bloody lot of caffeine if I'm honest, it's time to finally explore this character with some direction. For this character challenge, I wanted to first figure out what the face is going to look like. I wanted her to feel kind, so I kept with slightly more rounder features, but I didn't want her to feel like a pushover. It's a tricky balance to achieve, and there's a lot of iteration to come, especially with the expressions. And at this stage, I'd been streaming for a few hours, but I didn't want to leave until I sort of explored that idea idea of the healing the mycelians underground. And this is what we ended up with at the end of the stream. We've got that front end profile view with those rounder features, a lot of standing pose, and then that mycelium healing pose. I let this sit for a couple of days and then I came back to it on my own time. And I don't know about you, when I look at my work a few days later, one of two things happen. I either absolutely bloody love it, or I'm thinking, who in the f drew this monstrosity? To be fair, I was somewhere in the middle. I like the ideas, I like some of the drawings, but the anatomy was a little bit sloppy in that first pose. I mean, where's that upper leg, for example? So that was the first mission for this session. Create a clearer, let's call it healing pose. Now I was trying to make it more interesting, really have her bent over trying to listen to the ground and her hand sort of coming towards us in 3D space, giving it a bit more depth. But in doing that, I kind of, lost the silhouette, which is annoying. If I could find the middle ground between the two of these, I reckon we'd be laughing. As a side note, something I've been testing out lately is if you have a black and white sketch or illustration, try duplicating that layer, then adding the noise filter to that layer and adjusting the amount to your taste. It seems to add just that little bit of extra something. To round out this session, I decided to test some different poses. I couldn't quite find what I was looking for on Pinterest, so I cracked open photo booth and started snapping away. Here I'm trying to translate the character onto the reference and using the reference kind of just as a loose guide. I'll be showing you a demo on this in a sec. Now I was really liking this pose, so I decided to add some black and white values down first, then I began to add some color with layer modes. They can seem difficult, but really all it is is using these layer modes like multiply, overlay, and color to give me a good base to work off of. And oftentimes I'll just merge them all down and just straight up paint over the top. And then I'll rinse and repeat if I need a little bit more color here and I don't want to just repaint the whole thing. I'll just add a color layer mode. If I need to darken some things down, I'll use multiply over the top of that, merge them down and rinse and repeat. Now at this stage, there was an issue. And I'm talking like a big issue, but I didn't know 
it yet. I was just frustrated and thinking this thing doesn't look right, but I have no idea why. At this point, I had to leave it for a couple of days and it wasn't until I left it for a couple of days and then continued for another couple of hours until I finally figured it out. And this blocky version of her was the key. It'll make sense when we dive a little bit deeper later on. There was also a really big issue with the likeness that we've eventually got to handle. But at this stage, this is where we're at. Now we're starting to get somewhere. We're fleshing out the character a little bit more. And then we've got this painted hero image. Not the worst thing in the world, but you look at it compared to the final, we've got a little ways to go. Now let's dive into how I translate from this reference onto the character doing this kind of stuff. So one thing that I did have here was the reference of the character's face. It comes in super handy and it helps me kind of stay on model. Now the big idea I'm thinking about when I'm trying to sort of match the character to the reference is I'm thinking about translating versus copying. I'm really just blocking out the simplest of shapes. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's probably not going to be perfect. All I want to do is try and capture this sort of essence of the pose. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll either lower the opacity of the layer or sort of erase it back to give me sort of that scaffolding, just something to see underneath to then draw on top of. And when we start looking at the smaller shapes, for example, the nose, if you look at my nose, it's going to be more sort of like triangular versus her nose. If we look at the character, she's got more of a, a rounded nose. It's going to be in a similar sort of position, but this is where invention comes in and a lot of iteration. And it's why at the very beginning, I want to start off with simple shapes, because if I dive into the details too soon, then I'm basically just drawing me. And then I'm going to try and plug her features onto my anatomy and it's just going to look weird. I'm not really looking at the reference a whole lot once I've got those basic shapes down, but I'll use it kind of as a guide. So for example, here, if I look at like my eye, when my eyes closed, I'm looking at the eyelash, like what, what angle is that? What direction is that going when the head's sort of tilted down a little bit? Same thing with the hand, right? I'm using the reference of my hand kind of as a guide for the perspective. You can see sort of these lines here, giving me a good guide as to what the character's hands are going Going to look like they might be in a similar position but the proportions are going to be all over the place and from here it's just iteration i'll knock the layers back i'll keep going over the top and using some of the principles from my line work video that i did a little while ago it starts to kind of take shape figuring out where the shadows are and sort of just adding a bit of variety into the line work but again this needs some work and you'll see how much it differs from the final when we get to there man how you doing hey man how you doing uh you're gonna be here soon you're running about an hour late mm, yeah i know i know also is that a palm tree in the background where are you okay so i hate to be the bearer of the bad jujus but i'm gonna be a smidgen late in an hour okay well when are you gonna get here man i mean look, we gotta get this done today this video's gotta get out soon well looky here benny boy i've been reading the comments and the people love me baby yeah. and i've been talking to my people and some things are gonna have to change yeah hey, what's that first of all i'm going to need a little bit of a pair eyes yeah is that right well no chance especially not after how you're acting now oh uh okay um let me ask you a question ben there you go can you tell what i'm feeling right now just for my face right what now. am i feeling what do you mean how can you feeling? see how stressed out i am can you see how frustrated i am no. what are you oh you can't about? oh well i'm so shocked but I guess you couldn't see that. You know why? Why? Ben, do you know why? Why? You're giving me two damn eyebrow movements and my mouth doesn't even close. I mean, it's a miracle I can even talk to you right now. Do you know how hard it is to get a damn match on Tinder? <laughs> this is not the time for the ha -has. I can't even chew my phone. <laughs> okay, look, you have a point. You have yeah, a point. I know, I know. Okay, that's about, we get this ad read done today yeah. and uh, we can talk about me making some expressions for you. All right, does that sound okay? Okay, you promise? Yeah, I promise. I mean, I guess it's good. I got it off my chest. Yeah, well, look, I'm glad now, you had this. step aside and let me show you why you hired me in the first place. Hey, hey, guys. Today, I want to talk to you about Ben's 8 hour, 10 chapter walkthrough tutorial. It's Jimmy Jammy packed, not just with the videos, but he also has made a 40 page PDF field guide for those of you that like to do the reading and the watching. And not only that, he's also done some sculpting of these 3D models so you can use them as a study guide to learn how to think in 3D like he does. And I mean, come on, there are so many people that are loving it. Look at these stars. You know where to find it. It's going to be in the pinned comment and the description. Oof, that's a good one. So Ben, what's up next uh. in the video? expressions. Oh really Ben, instead of spending all your time expressing on other characters, why don't you spend some time just giving me a simple expression, you know? Or just let me close my mouth. Yeah, you okay. will do nothing without me. I'm going to go and call my agent. I, I mean, I gotta find right. an agent first and send okay. You better believe I'm going to call him. <sighs> We've created a monster. All right, so she needs a little bit more personality and we're going to get that with some expressions. So I cracked open a new stream and got to work. And like with most of my streams or drawing sessions, I want to warm up first. So I got some different references and decided to try and 
capture their expressions using the simplest shapes possible. Then it was time to focus on our character. Using that front view as a guide, I tried my best to translate the expressions from the reference onto the character's face using very similar methods that we talked about earlier with translating versus copying one-to-one. -one. I'm trying to keep the shapes as simple as possible to prevent me from going too far into the details too early. This is one of the biggest things that I've had troubles with as I'm learning this more stylized way of drawing. And while I'm doing this, it really helps to have reference of artists that I admire, not just photo reference. You can see in the corner here one of Jin Kim's character designs. I'll add a list of all the artists that inspired me in the description. And this is what I ended up with after the expression stream and a little bit of cleanup on my own time as well. And now it was time to fix up the hero image. Hmm, <laughs> the hero image. Coming back to a painting that I've been struggling with can feel like I'm going into the unknown. Is it gonna turn out all right? Am I going to waste another whole day on this thing? At this stage, I knew it wasn't looking right, but I wasn't entirely sure why. But I cracked open Photoshop and regrettably started to noodle away on the details. And I continue to work away on this for hours with no real progress. I mean, look at him. He's so frustrated. He's got no idea what the issue is yet. The issue is he's stuck in Noodle Town. What's Noodle Town? Great question. It's a place where the zoom tool is king. You go way too far into the details too early and you're noodling away on them. And in the meantime, you lose track of the bigger picture. To use it in a sentence, ah, shit. I'm in Noodle Town again. Now the larger issue that he's not seeing yet is that he's lost track of the light source, which he doesn't realize yet. That means he's kind of got to start over again again. Oh, my knees. He's got to start over again thinking about the bigger shapes first. Thinking about them separately to begin with, and then as a whole and how they're reacting to the light source. For a large portion of this rebuilding phase, I kept in black and white mainly, using the command Y shortcut to swap between grayscale and color. And because I was kind of starting from scratch, it was a good time to get a bit of likeness of the original character design. It was really just a lot of pushing and pulling until it started to feel right. And always keeping an eye on that original character design and the simple shapes of the features. And as the larger shapes were starting to feel better, I could start sculpting in the smaller and smaller shapes, but always keeping that light source in mind. It did suck realizing that I had to start again in a way, but in the long run, it actually sped up the process, knowing that I was working on solid foundations. And once I began this rebuilding process, things started to look and feel a lot better. Sometimes, you just gotta suck it up and start from scratch. Now that I felt like I was past the awkward ugly stage, I had free reign to bloody throw all the colors at it that I wanted and all the different texturing techniques, which I'll talk about in a moment. I was using the layer modes like color, multiply, overlay to sort of give myself a good base. And then like before, just painting on top. I also took a lot of inspiration from JC Leindecker's painted backgrounds for the final image and John Asaro for how he adds pops of super saturated color as you can see here that I did with the orange. Now from a character or story perspective, I wanted to add a little bit something extra. And you'll notice here that she's got almost this like mechanical dread coming out. I'm thinking of that kind of like her diagnostics tool to check the levels of the plants or something. I don't know, but you know what I mean. Now let's talk about this more painterly texture. At the core of it, it's understanding where the light source is and keeping the values in check. If we look at this sphere, that's basically what I'm thinking about, except I'm thinking about it a little bit more faceted than smooth. So instead of smoothing all my lines and painting out and making every transition kind of blur between one another, I'm deliberately chunking each kind of section into its own kind of block of value. And one thing that really helped me out was something that Steve Houston said in his book, Figure Drawing for Artists. Different values equals different plane. From this little idea comes great things. Let's test this out with this flat plane. Imagine the light source positioned above it. Now let's divide this plane into facets and bend it. Notice that the amount of light reflected depends on how perpendicular the planes are to the light source. If there's a subtle curve, there'll be more subtle value changes. If there's a more extreme curve, the value changes are going to be more extreme. By smoothing out the transitions between these planes, we can create the illusion of a smooth form. The same principles apply. Once we understand the main light source, we can incorporate additional elements such as other light sources, rim lights, bounce light, and specular highlights. Now this way of thinking changes slightly when dealing with translucent or highly reflective materials, but she doesn't really have much of that, so we'll leave that for another video. Let's take the forehead for example. We can think about
out it sort of like our faceted sphere and make those plane transitions stair-stepped. Again, if there's a plane change, there's going to be a value change. So we know that the forehead kind of slopes down. So every sort of plane change that we want to make, we want to make sure that there's a value change there. Now, from a more technical point of view, I was using my filthy autofill plugin for Photoshop that myself and my good friend Francis have made to speed up the filling of those shapes, as well as being able to add some quick color variation in each shape that I put down. The link's in the description, but it's definitely not necessary. And you can do this with the vanilla lasso tool if you want, or any brush that you choose. It's really the principles that matter here. And to keep this from becoming a mess of tiny little details, I decided to keep the smaller facets or the smaller details sort of contained to her head, which is the focal point, versus going super detailed with like the hand or the shirt. Now we're in the home stretch, but what I want to do is sort of add a little bit more story. I want to see her doing her mystical stuff. So we're going to add her in her environment doing some poses, but instead of just getting still images, what I've been doing recently is cracking open YouTube and actually pausing still frames. Someone in motion, in like natural motion, can capture it a little bit more than just still poses. Now I'm using the similar way of thinking of translating versus copying from these references. This is just a different way of getting reference that I've been testing out. And if I want a really specific reference, there's nothing stopping me recording myself and after all that is the final result look is it the most original idea in the world definitely not it was a bloody challenge but it was a good process to sort of go through to push myself outside of my comfort zone and uh, try something different now i'm going to be doing more of these moving forward on stream uh, so if you do want to join me i stream here on youtube i've also got a discord community where we share our work in progresses and here's a couple of awesome submissions for this challenge by thunboy and g noble a from the discord and look, let me know if you like this. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I think you might like this video.